Hello everyone, Neuralars Hands here, and today we're going to talk about multimeters, true RMS versus non-RMS multimeters, and the question of do you need a true RMS multimeter? And the answer is yes, yes you do. Thanks for watching. Alright, so that's not the end of this video obviously, but I do get that question, and the answer really is yes, you do. And today I'm going to talk about how multimeters work, and when I finish, I think you'll understand why it's important to have a true RMS multimeter, no matter what you're doing with these multimeters. Now in my previous video, why is my inverter only outputting 80 volts? I described the differences between a phase-corrected modified sine wave inverter and a non-phase-corrected modified sine wave inverter. I didn't go into the details, and I'm not going to go into the details here either, but it was enough of a summary, I think, so that you can see the benefits of a phase-corrected inverter. And you may have noticed in the last video that some multimeters are better at reading the voltages than others, and the true RMS multimeters in particular are the best at it. Now, even if you're doing electrical work on a 60 hertz sine wave like an electrician, you still really should have a true RMS multimeter. Voltages are not sine waves, and I don't care if you're looking at the utility grid or some other device, they're never true sine waves, and you really should have a proper meter. Now this is the multimeter that I use for most applications. This is very, very old. It is the Craftsman model 82289. It is a multimeter. Here it is on AC volts, but if I change the mode, it is an oscilloscope. Yeah, it's a pretty crappy oscilloscope. I think the bandwidth is 100 kilohertz, but for power frequencies, it works pretty well. And I really like this multimeter. I've had this for, I don't know, 12 years? Long time. And uh, this is a discontinued model, but if you can find it, I would highly recommend it, because there's not many multimeters out there in this price range that are this good anymore. But uh, this is a pretty handy meter, and it is a true RMS multimeter. So I use this one for most of my applications. I don't have a fluke or I'd probably use that instead, but this one does have an oscilloscope. I bought this particular one from Harbor Freight a while back because it was super cheap and it had some additional functions, a lux meter, uh, temperature, duty cycle, decibel meter, has a microphone and an optical sensor here which is kind of handy for various things, but this is not a true RMS multimeter. So I can't really use it for many applications. It works fine for DC. For DC it measures average voltage, all multimeters do that, RMS or not. And for AC it doesn't quite work that way, and I'll explain how it does work. This is another cheap meter, I actually got this one for free with a coupon, so yeah I didn't pay for it, but uh, I do use it sometimes, and it's accurate enough for some applications, but again these cheap meters are not true RMS. I also want to show this particular meter here. This is a kilowatt P3 meter. These are also fairly old technology by now, but they're really handy. I really like these, and I use this thing a lot. But it's important to note that this is true RMS. This reads RMS voltages correctly, RMS currents correctly, phase shifts correctly, all kinds of things very, very well. It's a very well-made meter, and it is true RMS. Why is it true RMS? Well, because any electricity meter that is not true RMS, you can just throw it away. It has no purpose completely, completely useless. All meters should be true RMS, and no matter what you're considering, you should get a true RMS meter. I didn't in this one because it was free, and I didn't in this one because I was buying it for other features. But any meter you plan on using regularly should be true RMS. Now, what are the real differences between a true RMS meter and a non-true RMS meter? I mean, how do they actually work? Sure, the non-RMS meter is not going to read the proper voltage unless it's a pure sine wave. The RMS one will, but why doesn't it read the proper voltage? Well that's because there's five major classifications of multimeters in terms of AC voltage. Now I do want to mention quickly, uh, there's somewhat of a misconception about this, I do want to mention quickly that RMS meter or not, it measures average current, not RMS current. It will always measure average current, unless otherwise specified. Also with DC voltage, it measures average DC voltage, not RMS. So for current and for DC voltage, it will always be average, unless otherwise specified in a specific meter. But AC voltage is AC coupled, 
and it is RMS in an RMS meter. In a non-RMS meter, I will explain how that actually works. Now, if you have a DC component and an AC component together, let's say that you have 12 volts, a battery voltage, and there's two volts of ripple on that, and you use either one of these meters and put it on DC, you will not get the proper DC voltage, no matter if you use this meter or this one. You will not get the proper DC voltage. And that's because the DC voltage is average, even on a true RMS meter. So if you get a 12 volts DC with a 2 volt sine wave on it, it will read the average DC voltage, not RMS. So you do need to get a rather sophisticated meter to get DC plus AC. I'm not covering that here. This is just a description of how multimeters actually work when measuring voltage. So let's take a look at the five major classifications of how multimeters read voltage for both RMS and non-true RMS. First, I'm going to cover a very old technology for reading RMS. Now, almost no meters today use this method, but it does have certain advantages that could be useful in certain laboratory settings, and I'll go over those. But this is a thermal RMS meter, and that means that it actually measures temperature. So you have your test leads, Here's your test leads, and basically it just runs through a resistor of some value. And it may auto-select this resistor based on your voltage, or more likely you have some sort of manual select like this, where you select the different DC voltages, and it selects a different resistor. This meter is certainly not that type, I'm just using it as a dial representation. But So basically you send your voltage through a resistor. And ideally this resistor would have infinite bandwidth, and for practical purposes, it pretty much does, because it handles all kinds of frequencies. And then the meter doesn't actually read anything, except the temperature. So it has a thermistor over here that uh, varies its resistance with temperature, or a thermal couple, one of those two devices. And then it measures the voltage at these terminals. So basically, it is measuring the temperature of this resistor. And the temperature of this resistor is directly dependent on the voltage over here. So the higher the voltage, the hotter this gets, and your temperature increases. It then converts this temperature here into a voltage, and it displays it on your LCD display. 12.004 volts, or whatever it happens to be, it doesn't matter. But this is how a thermal meter would work. Now this does have a few particular benefits, for example, the crest factor is very, very high on a meter like this, as well as the bandwidth is very, very high, because all it is is a resistor. Its bandwidth is in the megahertz, most likely, and the crest factor can be infinite for practical purposes, and it would still work correctly. Now, what is a crest factor? Well, that's basically if you have a sine wave like this with a DC voltage of zero volts in the middle. The peaks here and here are, uh, square, are uh, uh, square root of 2 times the RMS. So that means that this peak is 1.4 times the actual RMS voltage. And I'm going to go over this a little bit later, but the crest factor here would be 1.4. Now if you have a different waveform, we'll just put 0 volts, zero volts somewhere where you can see it. 0 volts right here and your waveform looks something like this, with a really high peak over here, and then a really low peak over here, and then maybe a really high peak over here. Something with a really strange waveform with very high peaks. Then many measurement methods won't work very well. But this resistor is going to directly see these peaks. And it will still measure the RMS voltage exactly properly. So this is a thermal meter. You just run your voltage through a resistor, and you do have to load your circuit down to do that. That's one of the many, benef many uh, detriments to this method. And then you measure the temperature of it. And this is basically never used. So let's just move on to what's actually used in multimeters today. This would be more of a laboratory special setting. Now what is most common today for non-RMS multimeters is one of two classifications. You can either have a peak detector or an average. And both of these are very, very easy to implement in analog logic. 
Now it just so happens that the peak voltage of a sine wave is the square root of 2 times the RMS voltage. So what a peak detecting non-true RMS multimeter does is, is, is that if you this is your waveform here and this is the waveform that it gets something like this. Basically it just detects the peaks here and here and it determines the RMS voltage from that based on very simple analog mathematics. So if the peak here is up here and down here it just takes the peak and it multiplies it by square root of 2 over 2 which happens to be equal to uh, 0.707 approximately is square root of 2 over 2. And then it just displays this. And it doesn't care what the rest of this waveform is. This waveform could have looked like this, and it would still display the same value. As long as this peak is equivalent to this peak, and this trough is equivalent to this trough, it doesn't know the difference. It's still going to output the exact same voltage. And that is completely incorrect because this has a significantly lower RMS voltage than something like this. But that is a peak detector. A peak detector is also known as an AM radio, by the way. In any case, the other option is to do an average. And once again, an average is very, very easy to do. In fact, most multimeters already have that function in the DC range, because DC is an average. So it just takes the average voltage through some analog circuitry and uh, does the average. And then it converts that mathematically into an RMS voltage. And once again, they're doing the same thing here. They're assuming that you have a pure sine wave going into your multimeter. And then they take the analog average of this and convert that into an RMS. That's another way that you can do it, but again, it's completely wrong for waveforms such as this one down here, completely wrong. Now, there are a couple different ways to do an RMS meter. There's the traditional analog way. And what is RMS? Well, RMS. RMS means that the voltage that is the RMS voltage is equivalent to the DC voltage. So if you have a particular voltage over here, and you send it through a resistance, the heat output of this resistor is equivalent. So if you have 12 volts RMS applied to these terminals, this resistor may output 100 watts, for example. And then this is 12 volts DC, 100 watts. Well, if you want 12 volts AC and apply that to these same terminals, you would still get 100 watts out of this resistor. And that's what RMS means. Now if you used peak or average or any other measurement of this voltage, it wouldn't necessarily be equivalent to 100 watts run through the same resistor. Because the peaks and the troughs could be completely different. And uh, basically, you have to use some mathematics to get that. So RMS stands for root mean square. RMS is the root mean square voltage for those of you who aren't entirely familiar with this sort of thing. But basically there's two different methods to do this with a multimeter. There is the analog way. And the analog way uses analog circuitry to do it, not surprisingly. So basically it takes the input voltage and it squares it. And it does that with analog circuitry. It then takes a time average of this squared voltage, and it does an average of that voltage, and then does a square root of it. And then you get your RMS voltage, because that's how you get an RMS voltage. The other way to do it is to do a digital sampling method. And this is how most oscilloscopes do it. Multimeters typically do the analog way, because it's really easy with analog circuitry. Oscilloscopes, like this meter here, which has a built-in oscilloscope, does it with a uh, digital method to get the RMS meter, <clears throat> RMS voltage that is. So they do the same procedure here except they quantize it 
instead of doing an analog filter, which may have a bandwidth of 10 kilohertz or something like that, it does a digital sampling method, which could have any sort of bandwidth. So you take your waveform, and we'll just call it a sine-ish wave here, and you divide it up. You sample it here, you sample it here, you sample it here, you sample it here. Whatever your sampling bandwidth is, and you just go on down the line and sample it at regular intervals. And you take each of these points, you square them, then you average them, and you take the square root of that average, and you get your RMS voltage. Now, either the analog or the digital sampling method works adequately well for most purposes. If you're doing uh, any sort of scientific testing, then you'll certainly want to know the difference, but for most people, it doesn't really matter. A true RMS meter will work well for all power frequencies. And there is a quick description of the difference between RMS meters and non-RMS meters. And I'm not going to go over specific details of where RMS meters are needed and where non-RMS meters are okay, except to say that RMS meters today only cost maybe 10, 20 bucks more than a non-RMS meter. So why would you waste your money in one of these pieces of junk? Well, if it has specific features like this one does, and you get it for a really good deal, then I guess I could see where you might want to save 20 bucks. But really, multimeters like this last for years and years and years. So just get yourself an RMS meter, and then you'll be done, and you won't be misled. For example, on my previous inverter video, an inverter may measure 80 volts on a non-RMS meter, but it's actually 120 volts on a uh, RMS meter. And also, that's why things like this, this kilowatt power meter, have to be RMS meters. And there's a number of reasons for that. One of them is the waveform that I just described, so that you get the proper voltage to calculate power. Otherwise, you'll be way, way off on your power. Also, it needs to do this exact same thing on current. And it needs to know the power factor or the difference between voltage and current. And actually, this particular meter does it completely digitally. It samples and uh, calculates the power factor based on whatever waveform of voltage and current. For a lot of people, they don't really see the benefit of an RMS meter over non, because if you plug it into a wall outlet, ideally you get the same voltage. So why spend more on the RMS meter? Well, for people who know what they're doing, yeah. Get a true RMS multimeter, unless there's specific reasons. Free, extra features and cheap. This is the one I actually use, and this measures power correctly. So that's a quick description of the difference between a true RMS multimeter and a non-true RMS multimeter, and thanks for watching.